Uh, this is regularly scheduled meeting of the Southern Board of Selectmen. It's June 18th, 2018, the day after, the day after the parade, <laughs> the day after the free food and Polish music dancing, and two days after an outstanding uh, presentation by our elementary school and staff um, and birthday cakes. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we'll do is we'll talk about that in a little bit. We want to run through. We have a uh, an appointment at 6:30, and Carol's not here yet. We'll talk about electricity, aggregation, and uh, but we want to keep moving so that we uh, can move the agenda right along. So Dave, we have uh, minutes from June 11th, 2018. I'll make a motion on those. Give me a motion made and seconded on the uh, on the uh, minutes of. June 11th. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Two zero. Uh, Board of Selectmen updates. Dave? Um, other than uh, we had a fantastic parade this weekend. Um, I think it was a, a good weekend overall for the town of Sunder. Looks like everybody had a good time. Good turnout for the parade and everything. Um, and I, I think uh, a hearty thanks is due to all those who uh, put this together because they did a fantastic job. It, uh, it went off really well. Looks like everybody had a good time, and there was an amazing fireworks display the next night. And I think it, uh, it was a great, great weekend. Um, Tom, Z Tom Zimnoski was originally going to be here to talk tonight. Sean oh. Tom is the chair of the... Uh, the 300th anniversary committee. Um, I think Tom is probably still sleeping. <laughs> I don't think he, uh, after Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Probably a little tired. I think he was like the Energizer bunny, but even the Energizer's bunnies. Yep, runs out of batteries. Down after a period of time. Just like our precision our clock, exactly. Clock that has new batteries. Well, he was probably pretty um, hot too from the parade. So. <clears throat> I, I would like to to thank everyone um, that the committee, the parade committee. I uh, I think when Tom comes, he's gonna hopefully will bring the committee, yeah, and they can good. take a bow for the work that that they've done. I know I would probably miss someone running through all the people because I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of work that goes on. Um, that most people don't even see, especially having a parade um, and making sure everybody gets in the right place at the right time and getting the, the right me mix of bands and cars and tractors and floats and stuff. Um, and, and there were a lot of people on, on the weekend that did things that some of us wouldn't notice, um, like handling parking and driving golf carts with people going here and there. Um, and I don't think I could, I don't think I could possibly name everybody that did. But I would say that the hardest, um, the hardest part of, of doing what the committee did was the day of the celebration parade was wondering if anybody would be there. You hope. Yep. You did everything that you could do. Um, but I'm. I would bet there's probably when they they always worried how many people would turn out. Um, I have marched as a representative of Sunderland in a few parades of the board of selectmen. We marched in. Hadley, and we marched in Amherst, and we marched in Conway. Montague, we marched in Conway, um, and the people <clears throat> that turned out along Sunland Route were was very impressive. Um, it was a big turnout. It was a big per turnout, but I think it was just was just as important if was that they were families and friends that had gotten together along yep. the parade route to spend time with one another. And Mike Mike was um, 
one, one thing he said was um, about the bar and, uh, you know, the bar being had set high. I agree with Michael. The, the bar from the 67 celebration, the bar was set high. Um, but I think it was set high is because um, there was a lot of good memories that were created for those young and not so young. And they, they remembered that. And I, I saw a lot of people that lived in town um, and had moved away. Um, people from all over the place that had come back to, to be part of the celebration. And it was because of those memories that were created when they were back here in 1967, 68, that when we had our our 250th. And I would just like to tell the parade community that um, from what I heard, you guys created a lot of the parade committee and the 300th committee, you created a lot of memories. Um, so your all your hard work will has has left an impression. Not only not only that, um, not only did you leave it with the people, the residents of the town that right now, but the people that that visited. Um, you should you should be very proud of one another um, for the job that you did. Um, and again, the proof was in the pudding, and things went really well. It they was did. very. I mean, I the just heard things about you know how well the uh, parade was put together, how well one one event flowed right into the next event. Um, and I told them, I told those people, I, I said, you give all the credit to the uh, committee and the volunteers that put it on, but it's not over. No, no, we have that's... other things that are happening this summer, yeah. and when the committee comes in, I hope they uh, they'll run down the list of stuff. Um, that they have, but but the town of Sunderland, I'd like to congratulate you. You guys did a great job. Um, you you uh, represented our community very well. So good job, guys. Town administrator updates. I have nothing at this time. Darn. Uh, <laughs> new business: Sugarloaf Riverside or Sunderland Riverside <coughs> Park donations policy. We'd like to hold that until uh, July second, when the <clears throat> members of the Pathways Committee will be here. Um, to discuss um, the park project. Okay. Uh, FY19 appointments, Davey. All right, I have two lists here of appointments. Um, do we want to do the list as noted rather than read through them all, or? No. <coughs> we can do an appointment as presented. Is there any distinction between the two lists from a title perspective? Uh, one is the town employees, um, and the other are the, the committees, committees and commissions. commissions and boards. All right, so you know what I'll do is I'll do a separate um, motion, for motion for each one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to appoint all of the town employees as noted on the 2017 to 2018 roster of appointed officials. Okay, we have a motion to point for 2017 actually would it be FY FY, FY. Right? yeah yep. we have a motion to appoint the uh, presented list for FY 19 um, all those uh, I'll second that any discussion okay we have here any discussion all those in favor of presenting the uh, List of volunteers, appointed officials, roster appointed officials, and the employees, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Sherry, that's two zero. So we have our appointments. Uh, just would like to note also that Scott Bergeron is not present tonight. Um, Scott's representing the, uh, the town of Sunderland Board of Selectmen over at the Frontier Regional uh, School Committee where they're talking about the uh, interim superintendent. Yep. So uh, we uh, thought it was important that uh, we be in multiple places at the same time, Well, we can't be. So Scott uh, went over and he's representing us over there tonight. That being said, Aaron. 
Oh, we got one more, though. Well, yeah, it's yes, uh, I, just I have want... a, to me to make a motion for FY19 for the committees, commissions, and the boards list, too. First motion employees. Yeah. This one's even, this is an even bigger <laughs> list. Okay. For uh, committees. Committees, commissions, and boards. Board. Commissions and boards. As commissions a as lot. presented. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Two zero. All right. Okay, Aaron. Good evening. Um, I had hoped to present our newest member of the committee, Carol Ryan, who um, said she might like to be the liaison between the Energy Committee and the Board of Selectmen with regard to municipal aggregation. Um, but she's not here, so I'm not sure what happened there. Um, I'm hoping that she will still come, or we might have to arrange another time to meet. She's our newest member, and she's sort of still feeling the ropes of the committee, so she's not sure about stepping into this position, but I said that I would support her in, in any way I can. So basically, you, will, you have received on May 16th a memo from Bob Dean of FERCOG, uh, giving you an update as to where the municipal aggregation stands. Uh, earlier this year, a committee made up of various towns met with, uh, uh, they had issued uh, before that a request for proposals for electricity supply aggregation. This is a request for an aggregator or aggregation consult consultant, as it's called, right. to shepherd the towns through this process of finding an electricity supplier who uh, will make it. individual contracts with different towns, though the same supplier can be used in aggregate to uh, allow economies of scale to get us a better price. So that, that's what went, went wrong when Hampshire Cog tried to do it a number of years ago. They tried to do one uniform contract with all the towns, and that was not approved by the DPU. So the way to do it correctly is to have each town have its own contract with the supplier, but that supplier can be common to all the towns yep. uh, in total. And there are about 13 different towns who have expressed interest in Franklin County in, in, uh, in aggregating together. They are Buckland, Charlemont, Coleraine, Conway, Deerfield, Gill, New Salem, Northfield, Shelburne, Shrewsbury, Sunderland, Warwick, and Waitley. Sunderland is the second largest town of that group, second only to Deerfield. And it's interesting to note that our sister towns, Conway, Deerfield, and Waitley, are all on board with this, with this uh, prospect. So in April, um, the Colonial Power Group was the only one who responded to this RFP. And they were interviewed by a committee of members appointed by the select boards of the various towns who had signed on at that point. And they enthusiastic and enthusiastically endorsed Colonial Power Group as the aggregator, and they were chosen to, to be the aggregator for this Franklin County aggregation. The next step, which we accomplished at town meeting, was for Sunderland to authorize the board of selectmen to engage in contractual agreements with the aggregator and eventually with um, electricity suppliers. And now the next stage after that is to establish contact with Colonial Power Group, the aggregator, aggregation consultant, to discuss what Sunderland's needs are, the way the process will work. Um, Bob Dean also sent us a sample contract, which they have passed through their internal complement page. Um, and this contract was deemed to be okay with the Colonial Power Group. This is just a template. Sunderland can, of course, add or, or change this to its own likings and to meet its own needs. But this is sort of the boilerplate that other cities and towns have used when, when they've aggregated. And um, I was, just want to emphasize that one important component of the aggregation contract is that of public education. 
because I know this was sort of a concern at, at the town meeting. And it says here that the consultant, the aggregator, shall prepare or cause to be prepared all informational and educational materials for the general public and for the media subject to the approval of participating communities, including meetings with municipal officials, town meetings, representatives, and the media. The consultant shall create DVDs covering an executive summary and a more detailed description of the aggregation process suitable for public education on local cable access channels. So there will be a lot of publicity. There will be press releases, there will be articles in the recorder, there will be this video aired on the television. Um, we could put articles certainly in the town newsletter. There will be every, every attempt before the aggregation happens mm -hmm. to inform residents of Sunderland about what's happening, what they need to do if they want to opt out, what is to be gained by joining the aggregation. And so unless you're hiding under a rock somewhere, it'll be hard to avoid knowing what's going to happen. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are rocks in Sunderland, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the idea be to, behind the opt-out policy was to try to make it easier for folks to do the right thing and a tiny bit harder for them to do the wrong thing. In other words, we think this is a good deal for Sunderland. It will give people lower rates, it will give them price stability, and it will give them a larger component of renewable energy in the electricity that they purchase. That's a good thing to do. So if they do nothing, they will be included in this aggregation. If they, for some reason, they don't like renewable energy, they like the price going up and down on their energy bill, they like Eversource, they can stay with Eversource as their supplier. All they have to do is check a box on a website or call a phone number or some process that's extremely easy. That will all be made clear in these education materials exactly how that's done. Do you know if they're going to do a mailing to everybody for the... That could be done if, if you think that that's necessary. Mm -hmm. um, exactly how that will be financed, I'm not sure, but that could be under discussion with Colonial Power Group, certainly. Uh, Mark the president of um, Colonial Power did call last week and he said he would be, once we entered into a contract, he'd be happy to come out and talk to the board about next steps in the process. Yeah. So we have the contract documents um, and once uh, the contract's ex executed, he'll be happy to come out and meet with the board and the Energy Committee. Excellent. Any other questions I can answer? I think at the moment, I think once we I, I think the biggest thing, Aaron, was that uh, people realize that they opt they have to opt out of the uh, negative the consent. program versus opting into the program. It's a little different. So it's important that everybody's just aware of that so Yes, I realize that concern and I think it's a valid concern. I think we'll do everything we can to publicize that yeah. feature of the program and make sure people understand it and are comfortable with the way it works. And we probably will uh, work together with Sherry to put out a, uh, a code red call. Yep. And, yep. And, and, uh, just, and again, just so people are aware, the more, because one, one thing, no matter <clears throat> how much we try to publicize something, it always seems that there's always a few people that don't get notified. So we want to do the best we can yes. to try to notify. And there's no deadline for opting out because you can opt out at any point. Right. Even That's after true. The aggregation happens. So. Yeah. If you see your first energy bill and are surprised by it, you can opt out the next month if for some reason it's not to your liking. But you're not stuck in it as a, from and a contractual if, standpoint. Yeah, and if people are actually saving money, that would be a good thing. Yeah. The only people who should opt, opt out is those people who have already contracted with an alternative uh, supplier. supplier yep. Because if they don't opt out, there could be fees for opting into. Um, the aggregation contract. Mm. Or it might be a severance fee that they sh should be aware of. So they might need to opt out in order not to be charged. All that will be talked about. It varies according to who the supplier is. Mm. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Gary. Thanks. Thank you. David, anything else? No, I think we're good for this week. Jerry? No, I have nothing. No. Our next meeting will be in two weeks. July 2nd. July 2nd.
July 2nd. Just before the 4th. Maybe we'll have another fireworks this morning. You know, nothing and nothing wrong with that. That was a, I'll, I'll just throw one other thing. That was a fantastic fireworks display. I'd say we, not to be competitive about it, but that's one of the <laughs> we gave a number of towns around here the more for their money. It was a, it was a good time, excellent display. The uh, and just to comment on that, the um, the committee actually worked very hard. Um, to bring those fireworks to town. I'd like to um, thank Delta Sand and Gravel. They donated a sizable amount to uh, pay for those. Um, but even though there was a donation to pay for them, the, uh, the, uh, the fireworks committee still went out and uh, interviewed a couple different uh, providers and the providers that were used by us was a group called the Central Maine Pyrotechnic Group. Hmm. And I would just like to commend the committee's choice of Central Maine. Um, they're not, they may not be the biggest, but they put on- Did a one, good job. They put on one heck of a show. Hmm. And we were, sent, we were sitting down by the ball field and the thing that was, there was, in particular, the thing that was very interesting is listening to the crowd behind you. Yes, the oohs and ahs and whatnot. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And that that was that was um, anybody on the committee that heard the oohs and ahs um, from the vantage point we were at would have been really really pleased. Yep. Um, and again, I I uh, and I can't say enough about you know all the, all the things that happened. You know. And, and FCAT taped the uh, uh, Friday night presentation, so oh. that will be on. The parade is already on YouTube, so if you living under, lived under a rock and didn't see the parade, <laughs> um, or you're have away, to work, maybe, there are people or, that have yeah. to work, yeah. but um, the parade is on uh, YouTube. You can find it, um, FCAT right now has it on YouTube. Um, it's a... Uh, Russ Crenshaw and Priscilla Rush were the MCs of, right. the, of the uh, thing. Russ Crenshaw was a, was a former longtime member of our community, and Priscilla Rush was uh, a, a newscaster on, uh, I believe it was Channel 40, uh, a few years ago, and now she works for uh, Northeast Utilities or Eversource as, a, as their um, spokesperson. Uh, they did an outstanding job. Um, and you know it, it's funny because everybody that like in in the the play I'll call it play performance that was put on by uh, the school um, they took stories that were uh, and they sat and listened to uh, some residents of our town about stories that they had when they're growing up and from uh, historical anecdotes and they wove that into what what was presented and i just think that it was uh, an amazing performance they even uh wrote a new song for the town of sunderland mm. um, nice now, back in uh, the 250s we had a song and it was i think this title was oh sunderland and it was sung to uh oh christmas tree okay so uh, we have to dust that off and see uh, that old chestnut. See if I can find that and get go. it out to the school. So that now I have two songs. They can do it at Christmas time. We can yeah, still do it at Christmas time. But uh, Mrs. Montague brought us down to the sycamore tree, and that's where we sang go <laughs> Sunday. There you go. Great. And like I said, Mike, Michael, um, just want to reassure you that you created and the committee created uh, many memories for our young young residents that in 50 years they'll be trying to uh, stay stay up with uh, the 2017 committees. There you go. So people always tend to equate the Midwest with celebrations of America and birthdays and stuff, but you know you don't have to go out to the Midwest to see that at all. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, anything else? 
we'll let uh, we'll talk more next time Scott's here about this, but uh, but uh, hopefully the community has taken it a well deserved uh, a well deserved bow they should, and yep. some rest because uh, yeah. A lot yep. of things, and again, I like to thank everyone that stepped forward. Yeah, all the great volunteers time. at the festival, and, and the, the food trucks, and it was just amazing thing. So I thanks everyone. The importance is that it just went off so smoothly without a hitch, and that's, yeah, that's the secret to that is all the hard work behind behind it. Um, I don't know if I would say without a hitch. Well, you know, there's a lot. Well, you couldn't see any hitches. Yeah, we didn't. That's that's what it is. We didn't see any hitches. So, um, and that's 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 the the important part. But that's that's kind of a that because we didn't see hitches. That was um, a reflection on how hard exactly. um, And and, you know, there's little things like in in a parade that people have never marched in a parade would never notice and right. and and it's just like we were very fortunate we had an opportunity one time to uh to march in an inaugural in the presidential inaugural parade down in washington dc and <laughs> after being bussed around and under military guard and everything for the entire day when you got to the end of the, the parade guess what happened Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. right. We didn't know where our buses were. We didn't know where no to go. No point coordination. And, oh, it, it was amazing. But you know, this they had buses. Uh, yep. And again, you, you talk about you know Deerfield Academy. We had Deerfield Academy vans. We had Eagle Brook uh, vans. So I'd like to thank them. Um, so if anybody's downtown in the center of town looking to park, you're fine following historic Deerfield parking signs. Um, and that just shows the frugalness of the uh, committee because they didn't want to spend sixteen dollars on a sign, so they borrowed signs and nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a lot of things that went on, and they they had con- and and they had contingency plans, and 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 it was well well thought out. Um, and and that's. That's a testament to the the job that they did, um, and the support they got from the people in town. So, um, and the and the Navy they say, Bravo Zulu. So there you go. Okay, David, motion. Uh, motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. You know, something about when Scott's here. It's 6.58. I know. Call us a journey <laughs> with a 2-0 vote, and we will uh, see you back here July 2nd. <clears throat> Thank you.